Father in heaven, thank you for this uh, opportunity again to study these things, to study the prophecies and all this light that you have given us. Please give us clarity of mind and help us to understand these things. Give me the words to speak, Lord, and bless us with the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and be with us. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, today uh, we, we, we continue the study of the July 18 prophecy. And we want to now go into the possible nature of the attack. And uh, we will start at page uh, 29. So far we've seen the, the patterns that Showing July 18, 2020, uh, in connection with the Midnight Cry, in connection with Islam. We have seen all the symbols there. The 27th uh, July, we've seen the number 264 showing up over and over again. Uh, yeah, July 18 again is. July 18, 2020, I sh should say, is the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical as well as the rabbinical calendar. Uh, we saw August 11 as a symbol. This is on, on the other side of this board. So the, the link has been shown between the lines of Ezekiel and Josiah Lich and Letters, letters of Samuel Snow. We've all gone through that uh, information. So now we want to look uh, if the Lord has given us information uh, as to what is possibly going to happen on uh, July 18, 2020, uh, the nature of the attack. And if you read uh, on page 29, <coughs> it was discovered uh, by Theodore Turner that the first bomb in the Second World War on uh, Japan, the nuclear bomb, was on August 6th. I have to switch back to the other board again. On August 6th, the first nuclear bomb was dropped on the on Japan, on Hiroshima, as we all know. And it appeared that this date, August 6th, it doesn't want to come off. There it goes. August 6th. Uh, August 6th. On the biblical date appeared to be the... 20, on the biblical calendar, I mean, was the 26th day of the fourth month which of course symbolizes uh, uh, July 18, because July 18 again is the 26th day of the fourth month, both biblical and uh, rabbinical. So that was very uh, interesting. Then it was quickly discovered that also the second bomb on Nagasaki which was dropped on August 9, had the uh, Julian date, uh, 27th of July. Which is also, of course, a symbol that we have encountered in our study. Right? We, we saw it on the line of Josiah Lich over and over again. July 27, July 27, July 27. 
etc. So we see these symbols uh, appearing. And then it was also noticed that uh, the USA planned to drop a third bomb on Kokura, another city in Japan. And they planned to, 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 to drop this bomb on, on August 11. You can look this up in uh, Wikipedia. And of course, August 11 is a symbol uh, that you know from the prediction of Josiah Leach, right? August 11, 1840, when the prophecy concerning Islam uh, was uh, fulfilled. So this was pretty amazing to see all this symbology in this uh, nuclear attack on, on, uh, on Japan. And if you also look at the the first warning that was given to the United States, uh, to Japan by the United States, it was called the, the Potsdam Declaration. Um, it was in fact given and rejected by Japan on July 27, Gregorian. So again, we see July 27 showing up. And the final surrender of Japan took place, as you can see in the, on the page, on August 15, a Gregorian date. And August 15, or written in, 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 in uh, this way, the eight, eight month, sorry, 15th day of the eighth month. Yes, of course, symbolizes uh, what? Midnight cry. Midnight cry. Mm. So we see symbols of Islam, we see symbols of July 18, we see symbols of the Midnight cry. And by the way, the first bomb on Hiroshima was dropped exactly at 8.15 uh, in the morning. So again, we see here the eight day, uh, eight, eight, 15 day of the 8th month. Uh, again, a midnight cry. We see it twice. And a doubling, of course, uh, also <laughs> again a symbol of the midnight cry. And the most Astounding of all was, was that the, the period between the very first bomb on Hiroshima, uh, which was August 6th, 1845, uh, 1945, of course, sorry. August 6th, 1945, and July 18. 2020 uh, is exactly, as you can see, 3,910 weeks and five days. 3,910 weeks and five days. Wow. And if we drop the zero, which number is left? And a half. Right? Which is also a number we now should uh, uh, recognize <coughs> as a symbol of Islam. So, yeah, it's pretty extra extraordinary to say the least. And it can hardly be avoided uh, to make any other conclusion that July 18 will in fact be a nuclear attack based on this, uh, these patterns. Has anyone tried to look up the meanings of Potsam, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Kokura? Uh, not really. We have the answer. 
Yes, we, we did after Mike. <coughs> after uh, 2016 in Wales, the presentation of Rafi and Panium, um, Emma Beant, um, Donna st looked at the dates, the 6th of uh, August, she looked at that the 6th of August and the 9th of August and we've seen Hiroshima and Nagasaki being connected to the Raffia and Panium and the 6th hour and the 9th hour and um, there was some studies, we, we did check out the, date, the, the names of Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki, I think one was like Long Island or Burnt Island, or I can't, I can't remember. <coughs> Long Island, I think, was or Long Peninsula, and yeah, I'd have to check it again. But we, yeah, we, we, have we have seen that. yeah, it was more about their geographical description. Mm -hmm. But that's all right. Yeah, <coughs> Potsdam. I don't think we have checked that out. But I would just like to mention that um, my understanding of the history was concerning the the bomb that was. You said it was the third bomb. Uh, it was going to be dropped on Kukura. The Kukura was originally the target, and, and that was the planned attack it was yeah. uh, on the 11th, 11th of August. It was the primary target for... Uh, Af after Hiroshima. After Hiroshima. Not yes, after, yeah. that, it, it was Kukura the was the primary target. Yeah. But yeah. what happened, the, the, they understood that the weather forecast was not going to be convenient yeah. to do it on the 11th of August. So then they brought it forward two days and they decided to do it on the 9th of August. And so they flew over Kukura. It was very cloudy. They were going to drop the bomb on the 9th of August in Kukura, but because the pilots, they couldn't see, it wasn't very good visibility, they then went on to Nagasaki, and it was clearer there, there wasn't the cloud cover, and that's when they, they dropped the bomb then on Nagasaki. Correct. Correct. If you Google the 27th of July for the Potsdam Conference, the date that will, that will give you will be the 26th of July, mm -hmm. uh, that, but it took place fairly late in the day. Time difference. In uh, Europe, I think, Germany or somewhere, Berlin, uh, well, Potsdam. And um, so by the time Japan heard about it and understood it, we can then mark the 27th of July. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. So what's the significance? that those targets got reversed? You don't know? Just Okay. All right. And there may be another in indication in the Bible where which sh possibly shows uh, or points towards July 18 as a n nuclear event. If you look at uh, Revelation 8, verse 11. Can somebody read Revelation 8, 11? And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Yeah. Thank you. And the name... Uh, Wormwood in, in, in Russia, in Russian, in the Russian Bible, it would read Chernobyl. So, Chernobyl means wormwood. And we know Chernobyl was the biggest nuclear disaster in the history of the world. Do we remember that event? In still going on. Still going on, in fact. Uh, it took place on December 20, sorry, in April 26. April 26, 1986. 1986. So April, April 26, April is which month of the year? The fourth month, so we see a uh, 26 four uh, year, which may hint t towards the July, may point towards July 18, 2020. 
Uh, also, if we look at the chapter and verse, we see chapter 8, verse 11, and 8, 11 should symbolize what? August 11, 18, 40. Uh, yeah, August 11, 1840, in fact. Put it like this. Uh, the star, which uh, is mentioned here in verse uh, 10, we identified as uh, Attila the Hun. And I believe we already had some, had made some application that Attila the Hun can symbolize Islam. Don't know if you remember, remember that, Jeff. So Attila the Hun is, uh, in itself is a symbol for Islam. Based upon the application of the trumpets in our history. Right. And Islam, uh, Attila is the third trumpet, in fact, possibly referring to the third world. Uh, and we know that uh, Attila, he is described in uh, Revelation 8 as a star falling from heaven. In Revelation 9, it, it starts with the falling of a star, right? Which is a uh, Muhammad effect. And these are the only two stars falling from heaven in, in the whole entire Bible. Oh, this is interesting. And again, uh, we see a doubling. The term uh, wormwood in verse 11 is mentioned twice there. So possibly it could refer to the midnight cry there. So that could be another piece of evidence to indicate that July 18 uh, is possibly going to be a nuclear event. Hope we can all see this. <coughs> so that's uh, about the nature of the attack. Uh, go to the ne next page. Page 30. Uh, there was a very interesting first passage uh, discovered in 2 Chronicles 17.11. Maybe somebody can read this uh, passage. Two Chronicles 17.11. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver, and the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 he goats. Thank you. So, if we now try to uh, yeah, dissect this first, uh, applying Miller's rules and see uh, what, what happens, what comes out of, of this. Uh, Miller's rule says, the first rule, we have to, every word must uh, have its proper bearing on the subject that you are studying, right? And we are studying July 18, an attack by Islam. So if we look close at, at this verse and look at the meaning of these words, the very first Uh, uh, the word Philistines, I should say, the meaning of this is uh, uh, Philistia, uh, land of sojourners. And if you look up the meaning of sojourners, it, it's, 
the synonym of sojourners is pilgrims or strangers. You can look, look, look it up in uh, any dictionary. And so sojourners or pilgrims or strangers, uh, where do we encounter this? We read this, 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 these words, pilgrims and strangers, in 1, 1 Peter 2, verse 11. Where it says, uh, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. But do we agree that sojourners uh, means pilgrims and strangers? Do we have to prove it? It's a synonym, right? You should know better than, than me. Uh, English is not my first language, but I looked it up. Uh, there are synonyms. Pilgrims and strangers are synonyms with the word sojourners. That is, that is what uh, Philistines uh, mean. So 1 Peter 2, verse 11 um, is mentioning uh, the strangers and pilgrims. And who is Peter talking about? We read this in 1 Peter 2, verse 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a what? A royal priesthood. So these pilgrims and strangers are, are who? The priest. The priest, right? Do we see that? Yeah, I can see it. It's kind of... Unusual. Unusual to see Philistines representing the priests. Yeah. yeah. We've used... Oh, yeah, in a little, little sense, yeah. I mean, even in the spiritual sense, I mean, I've seen in the scriptures where Philistines probably were the papacy. Yeah. But I know they can, they can have more than, more than one meaning, so... Exactly, exactly like we also do in uh, Esther, for instance, where Esther is morally... Uh, corrupt, how do you say? Yep. But prophetically, she is the. Who does she represent? Pure church. A pure church, yeah. So symbols can have uh, more, than one more than one meaning, of course. But we 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 apply the same principle here. So in in a, prof in a prophetic sense, a Philistine can mean uh, a priest can represent a priest. So therefore, we typify Philistines as, as uh, the, the priests for our purpose. If you look at the next word, uh, Jehoshaphat, it means, it's from the Hebrew word, 3092, it means the Lord judged, or judgment of God in Strong's Concordance. And Jehoshaphat, was the king of Judah, king of the glorious land. And today's glorious land is, is what? The USA, right? Uh, so a king can typify... Yes? I want to go back to the Philistine thing for just a moment. And... Um, when we use Esther, we weren't using, or Ahasuerus, we weren't using the meaning of his name, were we? Uh, to symbolize the... What were we actually using to symbolize? I'm just trying to... The context of the story, but her name spoke a little bit to yeah. the definition. It means a star, yeah. a messenger. Um, but we had to un come to understand Esther based upon the context of the passage as we put it into the prophetic line. Right. I think you can do this with this verse too. Yeah. Even though Philistine seems like a, a poor symbol of the priesthood yeah. at first glance. At first glance, yeah. And there are other examples where I can... Cannot come up with that at the moment, but uh, 
Maybe we can find some other examples. Uh, yeah, again, so Jehoshaphat means uh, judgment of God. A king can represent uh, a country. Uh, today's glorious land is the USA. And we know that the USA, as well as Trump, we know that he's the last president. They will be judged for implementing the Sunday law, right? Mm -hmm. So, his name, Jehoshaphat, signifying that the judgment of God will be upon the USA, or upon Trump, however you want to look at it. So we go to the next word in, in this verse, tribute. I believe you pronounce it as, as massa. It means, it can mean, it has uh, different uh, meanings. But one of the uh, meanings you can, can see is doom or prophecy. It, it also means burden or, uh, like it says here, tribute. But it can also mean doom or, or prophecy. So if you string these two words together, it means a prophecy. You can make a prophecy of doom of this. Do we see that? Okay, then we go to the, the very next word, silver. This uh, is a, uh, a well-known symbol. It also uh, can mean uh, this, um, yeah, many things, but one of the main uh, symbols is it stands for truth. You can read this in, in, in Psalm 12.6. Psalm 12, verse 6. Psalm 126. Yeah, Psalm yeah. 26. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Can anyone uh, read this uh, first? The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Thank you. So we see that his word symbolizes, uh, is symbolized by, by silver. We know that his word is truth, right? You can read this in John 17, 17, where it says, uh, could you read it again? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Amen. Right. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So we see that the word is truth, uh, so far symbolizes uh, his word, symbolizing the truth. So we have that symbol also. Uh, uh, nailed down. Go to the next word in f two, 2 Chronicles 17 11. You see the word uh, Arabian there. And this is the easy one, right? Arabians are, are what? The symbol of Islam, right? It's no, uh, not so difficult to see. And uh, then go to the next word. We skip over the 7,700 for now. We, Come across that later. We go to the to the rams. It's meaning the word Hebrew word H three five two, ayu. It can mean strong or mighty, or even mighty tree. And I put in brackets behind it. If if it, if it means if you say uh, it, it can mean a mighty tree. If the mode is indeed nuclear, like. The symbols suggest uh, it fits the, the tree-like cloud that we see in a nuclear explosion. But we skip that, we don't use it uh, in this verse, but we just say ram, it means strong or mighty. We take that uh, meaning, strong or mighty, and then go to the next word. It says, 
goats. And goats means, it is the word H 8494 Taish, something like that. It means to butt, to hit, to blow, to strike, to push. This is symbology that we see in which chapter? Daniel 8, right? Mm -hmm. Where you see the butting of the horns. Yeah. So it means to butt, to hit, to, to engage in conflict. To engage in conflict. So now if we string all these words together, the Philistines, Yoshafat, tribute, silver, Arabians, rams, goats. So we string all these words together after trying to interpret uh, all, all these words in, in this verse. You, c you can make the next sentence of it, and it goes like it says here, Some of the priests brought a prophecy of doom and of a truth to the United States, and the Muslims struck the USA with a mighty blow. Right? You could phrase it maybe in another way, but this is just one. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, 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 it sounds okay, but I think it would be better... Some of the priests brought a prophecy of doom and truth to the United States that identified that Islam was going to strike the United States with a mighty blow. Yeah. That's what the prophecy yeah. of doom is. Yeah. It's telling yeah. the United States what's going to happen. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yes? Uh, with the sheep and the goats, we can relate that to Matthew chapter 25, and a separation as well occurring, maybe? Yep. The sheep is separated from the goats, um, and it also corresponds with it being the Philistines being priests, because those are sanctuary um, sacrificial animals. It's, mm -hmm. so it adds to the definition of Philistines here. Yeah, well, thank you. So now we look at the, the 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats, right? We've looked at the meaning of every word except this number, 7,700, uh, mentioning, is, is mentioned twice. And do we know, do we recognize this number? If we, if we drop the zeros? Does it ring a bell? Yeah, Samuel Snow's letters, we saw it, this in the Kaiser, right? We see the 77 Kaiser here, right? Mm -hmm. Pointing to what? July 18th. Do you see it? And again, we see it, uh, it's wiped off the board. Uh, we had another line from 2016, December. 17 to 2016, when Rafi and Panim was opened up, yeah. we saw two 77s towards July 18 also. So we have two uh, pieces of evidence July here. 17th, or no, from December 17th, 2016 to July 18th, 2020 yeah. is 154 days, is what you're saying? No, the period from December 17th, I can do it here, the period from December 17th, 2016. 2016, that's when Rafi and Panium was opened up, Rafi and Panium was opened up right here. To July 18, 2020, we saw in the middle of the Italian camp meeting of, of June 9, in 2018. Uh, here we saw 77 weeks. Ah, weeks. And here we saw 770 days. Oh, if we okay. drop the zero. All right. We have two times 77. 
that was the the pattern. We have it in our history and in Samuel Snow's history, yeah. and we have it in this verse. Correct. Do we see this? And they all conclude, our history and Samuel Snow's history concludes at July 18th. Yes. 2020. Yes. Correct. So this verse is giving us also the date of the message of doom that has to be given to the United States. Yeah, it points towards uh, July 18th. Yeah, correct. So now we have uh, applied Miller's first rule that every word that every word must have its bearing uh, on the subject that we are uh, studying, which is July 18th. So I think we have we have done this. Even the word the word some it says some of the priests, right? So not every priest will accept this prophecy. As we see now, there are many, or some, I don't know how many, against time setting. They don't believe we can make these kinds of predictions. So, some of us will give the warning, and some of us will not. So, this is very uh, yeah, uh, impressive, to, to, to say the least, to, that every word literally in this word, in this verse, has, uh, uh, applies to, to the, the subject that we are studying. Not only the, the words, but only the, the first number, the chapter and first number itself. If you see, it, this passage is 2 Chronicles 17, 11. Uh, like we have seen in other examples before, we can use the chapter and first number. And if we multiply 17 times 11, what, what, what do we get? 187. We get 187. 17 times 11 is 187, pointing to July 18 again, right? And there are only two numbers that, when multiplied, uh, give 187. No, no other integers. Uh, you know what an integer is? A whole, a whole number. So integer is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Uh, but there are no other two numbers when multiplied integers, whole numbers. When you multiply them, you get 187. Only 17 and 11, or 11 and 17. And multiplied gives a one eight seven. So, but in this verse, there's two. What do you mean? So there's only one, but in that verse, there's two because it's second chronicle, so it's doubled. Yeah, this again, yeah, symbol for the midnight cry. Yeah. So this whole verse is pregnant with uh, symbology, up to the chapter number and first number itself. So, I don't know how much clearer we would like this to be presented. But it's, uh, yeah, it's right there. You didn't hit on it, but the word says presence. Where? That word presence, you can tell that it's like we're given an offering, truth. Oh, presence. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. So we can go to the next chapter, page 31. Uh, this is a quote about the ship of Paul running ashore at uh, Malta. Uh, this quote from Life Sketches of Paul. We will uh, read it. It contains yeah, a lot of symbology that we will try to uh, apply. Maybe can, somebody can read it, uh, Stephen? I got it. You got it? The centurion decided to follow the judgment of the majority 
Accordingly, when the south wind blew softly, they set sail for fair havens with the flattering prospect that a few hours would bring them to the desired harbor. All were now rejoicing that they had not followed the advice of Paul, but their hopes were destined to be speedily disappointed. They had not proceeded far when a tempestuous wind, such as is in that latitude, often succeeds the blowing of the south wind, burst upon them with merciless fury. From the first moment that the wind struck the vessel, its condition was hopeless. So sudden was the blow that the sailors had not a moment in which to prepare, and they could, not, they could only leave the ship to the mercy of the tempest. Thank you. So it has a lot of symbology, and we will only address uh, uh, some of it, most of it. The south wind, south wind uh, typifies uh, the king of the south, or Russia, gaining a victory at uh, Rafia, uh, which is November 9, of course. We can argue what it means that it, blow, that, that it blows softly. Uh, it suggests that it will not be a, a hot war with bombs and uh, missiles uh, flying uh, all around. So we can leave it at that. Uh, third, the third point, the tempestuous wind which we know is the Eurocliden, which means east wind, wind from the east. And it says it's, it's, it's tempestuous, so this suggests a more aggressive action from uh, the, yeah, the Islam, which we expect on July 18 to, to take place, as we uh, have said, possibly a nuclear uh, attack. Uh, such as in that latitude. The, the latitude indicates the geographical location where this east wind was blowing that was responsible for the ship running ashore uh, on Malta. Which will become relevant, this latitude the exact latitude where this ship of Paul uh, was running ashore on the coast of uh, Malta. But we'll Maybe you don't know because English isn't your first language. And I'm not saying that I know. But what I do know about English is this word latitude will sometimes be used in a general sense. That, you know, the equator is a latitude that can mean either the perfect equator yeah. or it can mean countries that are associated with the effects of living at the equator. You're living in the, the, the latitude there. So all I'm saying is it can be used as a general description or a specific I description. As <coughs> I understand it in the English, but anyone that wants to correct me here can correct me. But I know that as we proceed, we're going to use it in the specific sense, and yeah. I'm not fighting that that application. Yeah. But I'm I think living in the the, the equatorial latitude it would be a, a legitimate English expression that yeah. was just talking about living a, around the equator and suffering the effects of all that heat and humidity that is down there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's being specific. Yeah, I just wanting to make sure we understand this word because this word will become a point that we're going to build some strong conclusions on. Correct. Thank you. I'm maybe getting ahead here, but I just, as you were reading that uh, those verses there, on, on that statement yeah. from uh, Spirit of Prophecy, where it says. Um, from the first moment that the wind struck the vessel, its condition was hopeless. So sudden was the blow that the sailors had not a moment in which to prepare, 
and they could only leave the ship to the mercy of the tempest. And it reminded me of Matthew 24, 16 to 21. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that, that are with child and to, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as it was not since the beginning of, of the world to this time, no, never, no, nor ever shall be. Yeah. Yeah, and the word sudden there, striking suddenly, definitely Islamic reference. Mm -hmm. So then it would make those verses that I just read refer mm -hmm. to Punium. But July 18th is the Sabbath day. Y yes. So you better get out of town before. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. At least it's not the winter. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of symbology that we can uh, apply uh, right here. Uh, next point, number five. It says the east wind uh, often, often succeeds the south wind, indicating that we are to expect to see Islam rise to the attention after we experience the king of the south the that we expect at the uh, rafia november 9 so the we expect to see king of the islam to come after the king of after russia has uh, Yeah, how do you say it? After Russia at at, at Rafia, uh, giving a blow to the USA, we expect to see Islam. It, it may not. I follow what you're saying. That first it's Russia, King of the South, Rafia, soft wind. Yeah. Then Spanium temptatious east wind islam and it's in the context of warfare so you can look at it that way mm -hmm. but it just may be strictly the sequence if it's strictly the sequence then we can go back and see the king of the south at 1989 and then the east wind at 911 we'd have a, a this is another reference to it yeah it's also mentioned exactly what what you just said okay but it's not it's not based upon King of the South having a victory followed yeah, exactly. by Islam. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Okay. We don't necessarily want to say it has to be victory. You, you, you just see the King of the South come to the front of the scene. Yeah. As we saw in 1798, when the King of the South France inflicted a deadly wound to the papacy, succeeded by the August 11, 1840, the prophecy of uh, Josiah Lich, about uh, about Islam. Just yeah. And uh, just like you said, I mean, August 11 wasn't necessarily a victory of Islam. Right. So, but we just see an East Wind there, symbolically. And also, like Jeff just mentioned, in 1989, we see the Berlin Wall, we see Russia coming to the to the front uh, of the world scene, which was succeeded by 9/11, Islamic attack on the World Trade Centers, etc. And again, we we now are uh, expecting after November 9, 2019, where the King of the South will be victorious that it will be succeeded by an Islamic attack on July 18, 2020. So I hope that is uh, clear. And, th and then, <clears throat> after that, the history that we're proposing, we would see the final demise of Russia, the King of the South, and thereafter, we would see the third strike of Islam, the final strike of Islam. Right. So that 
King of the South, Islam, would carry all the way through that history. Because right. Islam still got to strike one more time at yes. the Sunday law time period. Yeah. Correct. Yep. And I had a thought too in regards to what Jeff is saying. November 9th, King of the South hits the United States. It has to be some type of strike where the King of the North is going to retaliate. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it has to be something where Paneum, he, you know, the South is retaliating to crush him in, yeah. some, in some way. So I know yeah. that's not in the paper, but I was thinking the thing that yeah. he's hitting on Islam, but I'm saying November 9th has to be something where the King of the South retaliates. Right. You mean King of the North is going to retaliate yeah. Yeah. because of November 9th. Yes. And what you need to remember is that the midnight cry, if it begins on July 18th, 2020, as I, I believe it does, it's a doubling. So there you got to watch two warfares, two dynamics, Islam and Russia, both against Balaam, the United States. Right. Thank you. So, uh, we've gone a little bit through this verse, or this quote from Sister White. There's much more to say about this, uh, but we want to concentrate on, on July 18, the external event. Uh, and even if you look at the reference, Live Sketches of Paul, 264, paragraph 2. We see the 264, right? Mm -hmm. Applying... Uh, 26th day of the fourth month. To the 26th day of the fourth month, which is uh, symbolically uh, July 18. And again we see paragraph 2, the 2 being a doubling symbol for the midnight cry. So that uh, very much concludes this uh, whole study, except for the possible location of the, this attack, that is, is another uh, study. Uh, but we can conclude the, the following on, on page 32. It mentions also the Syrian war. Jeff has gone uh, over this, where we saw this 10-year Syrian crisis from um, in the Millerite history, from 1831 to 1841. Jeff has talked uh, about this. That lines up with the current crisis uh, in Syria that started in 2011, which we expect to last also 10 years, and we expect this to end in 2021. And we have a date for uh, 2021, which is December 25, 2021, where we expect the Syrian crisis to, uh, to end by the defeat of, of, of Russia, the final defeat of Russia. But it, it, it's interesting to see that this line shows August 11, 1840, uh, paralleling, lining up with July 18, 2020. But we, we've gone through this already. But it's there for the reader to, to study. You, you should have the other line there too when you do your next update on this, and that being the, the Afghanistan proxy war. Yeah. Yeah, it's there in front of it. It says from 1979 to 1989, but you should take, take it on another line. And when did it start? December 25, of course. Yeah. So you got December 25, if you put those three lines together, at yeah. the beginning yeah, and yeah. at the end. Amen. Yeah, I will add this uh, to this document and you get another version. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
The conclusion uh, we might say is that all the evidence that we have presented after all this evidence that Panium could be seen as a period uh, rather than uh, just a point. I think period is also means point, right, in English? Uh, no? Period is in... Yeah, it can in the period on a sentence. Yeah. But it also means a period of, of time. time. Yeah, yeah a length of time. A length, length of, of time, time. Yeah. there's a better word. So Panium presents a, a length of time rather than one single point, of which July 18, 2020 will be the beginning of Panium, and December 25, 2021 will be the end of Panium. So July 18, 2020 is the beginning of Panium, and December 25, 2021, the end of Panium. The first thing that we came to understand about Panium is when we looked at the root word Pan, and we began to see all the words that are connected with the root word Pan. And there's no way that those words can be a point in time. I can't pull all the words to my mind right now, but like, a pandemic was one of them. Yeah. You're not going to have a pandemic in one day. One day yeah. uh, all those words were teaching a period, a, a length of time, not a point exactly. in time. Yeah. And one of the classic ones is that's where Pandora's box is open. So yeah. there's many troubles yeah. that come in in that history. Yeah. Yeah. There's a beginning when you open up the box, but then there's a, there's a result of opening the box. When you open the box, okay, something else happens. Yep. Cause and effect. Cause and effect, yeah. Amen. Thank you. So, we know that the period between, between Raphia and Panium is uh, considered the loud cry for the Levites, starting from November 9, 2019 and uh, December 25, 2021. You can see it on the board on uh, Top right. Um, so, uh, Millerite history will be repeated to the very letter we, we always uh, we are saying. So, in, in the same way that the prophecy of Josiah Litch caused an, an, an inrush of people, over 200,000 people, to join the Millerites, we may also expect the same after July 18, 2020. Uh, to have a similar effect on the Levites. For, as it is said by the movement again, Millerite history will be repeated to the very letter. And, uh, and all this, this evidence has been uh, yeah, pretty overwhelming. And I, I, uh, I mentioned a year that In, in a way, a, a rejection of this prophecy is like rejecting the 2520 itself. We see the 2520 symbolized by the, 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 the date itself, July 18, 2020. If we multiply 18 times 7 times 20, we get 2020, 2520. Also, the period between uh, Rafia and July 18 is 25, 20 days, which is rejected by the Omega movement, July 18, 2020. They, we, we all accept Rafia, but the movement, Omega movement, rejects July 18, 2020, and it's 25, 20 days between Rafia and July 18. So we see 25, 20 there, but again, rejected by the movement, this Remark. So you might you might say that a, a denial of this prophecy, July 18, 2020, is a, a rejection of the 2520, right? Amen. With the, yeah, possible dire, possibly dire consequences. Not possibly. Yeah, it's for sure. Could you reject like you go farther and farther into darkness. Yeah. yeah. 
and they haven't studied this subject ever seriously. Which brings to mind the following verses, Proverbs 29, 18. It reads, where there is no vision or prophecy, it means prophecy. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And also, would you like to say something? I thought you were trying to say something. Oh, sorry. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me. Sorry? That was always one of the primary points we would make from the very beginning of this movement. We would go into Daniel 12 where there's an increase of knowledge. Adventists aren't, aren't understanding anything. We would introduce that. And then we would go to Hosea, Hosea 4, 6 and, and identify to reject knowledge as life or death. Yeah. But for a decade plus, we never were recognizing that you get rejected from being a priest because we weren't yet seeing priests and Levites and Nethanims. Yeah. Um, this is much more present truth today than it was at the beginning, but this has also always been a, a foundational principle of this movement. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes? 4-6. 4-6. I find it interesting, Proverbs 29.18, if you, <laughs> maybe it's a, it's a stretch, but 9 minus 2 is 7, then you have 7.18, July 18, but uh, it's a bit of a stretch. Anyway, uh, like, Jeff just said, uh, it, is, it, is, it is about recognizing uh, his voice. And I, I really like uh, this quote that uh, Brother Daniel Fontenot uh, shared with us. I would like to read it from Testimonies, Volume 3, page 258. It talks about... Uh, yeah, the weight of evidence, and it, it reads as follows. The unbelief that demands perfect knowledge will never yield to the evidence that God is pleased to give. He requires of his people faith that rests upon the weight of evidence that we have seen over the past few presentations. The weight of evidence, not upon a perfect knowledge. Those followers of Christ who accept the light that God sends them must obey the voice of God speaking to them when there are many other voices crying out against it. It requires discernment to, disting to distinguish the voice of God. So it, it requires discernment to distinguish the voice of God. And if we recognize the hand of Pomona in all these patterns that we have seen, that we have seen, we are to act upon it. Just like Jeff also mentioned, uh, Abraham discerned the voice of God and he acted upon it when asked to sacrifice his son. So we also have to, if we at least recognize all well, these things are from Pamona, from God, then we have to act upon it. Uh, and I, I wonder myself, if we are not, like the, uh, the skeptics say, or, or the opposers suggest, we are not to look upon these things. If we are not to know these things, uh, is, is God not able to hide these things from us? Like he did with the 8043 chart, he put his hand over it, right? Mm -hmm. So why would he not do the same with this? But we cannot... Uh, and we see all these patterns, we cannot uh, deny it or neglect it. And, and I, I truly think that if the Lord 
would not want, want us to know these things that he, he would have uh, hid it from us. But we do see these things. And uh, yeah, also, what I think is, is very important uh, to mention, uh, we have this passage in the New Testament where Christ says, uh, I tell you these things before they come to pass, so that when it comes to pass, you may know that I am here. So when this prophecy will be fulfilled on July 18, 2020, we will know that he is uh, the one that is guiding us. And people have asked me to share a little testimony uh, that happened in Germany. Uh, it was the last big camp meeting where I think the movement had a chance to accept this prophecy. And the, me, myself, Stephen uh, were there. And at a certain point, they were asking us to come before them to talk about this very prophecy that they saw as, as a foolishness and error and a prophetic sin, in fact. And they wanted to talk to us, to me and Stephen, about this very prophecy. So before we went into the meeting, uh, I went into the, into the woods to pray about this meeting. And, and when I was praying, walking uh, on, on this, uh, this narrow uh, way, <laughs> so to say, uh, I, I looked up. And I saw a, a bird cage. Uh, and it was a, a bird cage that looked like the, this. I don't know if uh, Larry can zoom in on, on this. Okay. Can you see it? A bird house? Do you have it? And it it was painted uh, on it a number. I don't know if you can see the number. It says uh, that's the number 187. So that, <laughs> that was very uh, interesting for me. You can see it two times on there from this position. Number 187. Twice, double? Yeah. So that was... Uh, Yeah, very nice to uh, Some people will mock at that kind of yeah, I know. Um, revelation, but yeah. God's in control of providence, is he not? Amen. So I wouldn't normally share this, but people ask me to, to share it anyway, so there you go. There is a... Uh, that's cool. I've been, I've been hesitating to read this. I don't want to add my, too much of my two cents in, in yeah. to this, but... Um, Mr. White, uh, uh, in, in uh, <clears throat> manuscript six eighteen eighty nine, page twenty four is the references that I have. Manuscript six eighteen eighty nine, page twenty four. Uh, what Odilio just uh, testified reminds me of this. She says, and I've used this to encourage people many times over the years. There is to be no dread of anyone being born down, even in a widespread apostasy, who has a living experience in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If Jesus be formed within the hope of glory, the illiterate as well as the educated can bear the testimony of our faith, saying, I know in whom I have believed. Some will not, in argument, be able to show wherein their adversary is wrong, having never had any advantages that others have had, yet these are not overborne by the apostasy because they have the evidence in their own heart that they have the truth, and the most subtle reasoning and assaults of Satan cannot move them from their knowledge of the truth, and they have not a doubt or fear that they are themselves in error. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I'm but you know you have the evidence in your own heart. Right. Thank you.
It's beautiful. So I'm uh, I'm finished. There's, there's one interesting uh, interesting uh, per period between 9/11. Uh, I don't think we have mentioned this, uh, but between 9/11 and July 18, 2020, is uh, 18 years, uh, 10 months, and seven days. Between 9-11 and July 18, 2020, we saw an Islamic attack here. We expect an Islamic attack here. We see 18 years, 10 months, 7 days. Or for the mathematicians uh, among us. <laughs> if you, if you multi multiply, I'll, I'll do it here. 18 times 10, right? Plus 7. You get again uh, 187. 187? 187. If you multiply 18 times 10 yeah. and then add 7. Oh, then add 7. What if you multiply 18 times 10 and multiply it times 7? Uh, I don't know. But, uh, it's 1260, isn't it? Is this? I don't know. Ask the detail, man. I'm not the mathematician. We'll find out here in just a moment. <laughs> 1260. 1260. 1260. Okay, there 1260. you go. 1260. <laughs> Whoa. Which is a 126, right? Yeah, this is again uh, yeah. 126 or 2520. Yeah. Again, a uh, demonstration of uh, Palmoni. We can close with, uh, with prayer. <coughs> Dear Father in Heaven, thank you for this blessed study. Uh, that the words that we have read and, and spoken, that they may impact uh, our, our hearts that we may be convinced and that, that these are uh, that this is your your hand that this is your work that you may recognize your voice Lord and help us to act upon it help us to have uh, confidence to uh, rely on these these these, these things with our whole uh, mind and heart and help us to further in investigate these truths that, are, that you are revealing to us. Help us to dig for hidden treasure and help us to prepare for these coming events and that we, that we may be uh, settled into the truth uh, spiritually and intellectually that we cannot be moved, Lord. And we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.